Um, hello, welcome to uh, the Meet the International Jayhawks webinar. Um, we're really pleased to be with you this morning. Um, and uh, today we are going to learn about um, these fine people right here, who they are, where they come from, what they're doing at KU, and why that is such a fantastic experience for them. And so we're going to start this morning with the usual questions which is, um, what is your name, where are you from, and what are you majoring in? What is your year in school? All the stuff you usually tell people you know, when you meet them in college. <laughs> so we'll start with you, Abraham. All right, uh, my name is Abraham. I am a junior here. Um, I'm studying aerospace engineering, and I am from Nigeria. Hi, my name is Adrian. I'm a sophomore majoring in chemical engineering, and uh, I come from Honduras. Hi, I'm Archana. I'm a sophomore studying computer science and I'm from India. Hi, I'm Fabian. I'm from Indonesia studying chemical engineering in freshman. Okay, and so um, I have some questions prepared and hopefully we'll get some really good questions from the audience as well. Um, but we'll, we'll start from the beginning and why don't you tell us uh, your first impressions of campus uh, what did you think when you got? Uh, what did you think when you got to Kansas? What did you think uh, about KU when you arrived? Um, so my experience was absolutely amazing. Uh, I took a gap year after high school, so within that year, basically all I did was prepare for college, like applying to universities and getting my mind ready for what was to come. Um, so I was pretty pretty set. I was pretty ready, uh, and I came onto campus with high hopes and yeah, all my expectations were met and exceeded. Uh, campus is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the people I met were absolutely amazing. I've kept friendships that I made in my first week, like almost all three years that I've been here so far. Uh, so yeah, it was an absolutely amazing experience. Uh, it hit me like a brick that Lawrence is not as flat as everyone <laughs> says Kansas is. Uh, but yeah, my experience was absolutely amazing. I think, I think I had a support system from day one, like the day that we came for orientation, all these people, all these resources were made available to us, saying that we are here to help you if it's academic, if it's personal, if it's like mental health, physical health, just like whatever you need help with, there are people to help, help you out with that. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty amazing to see like, uh, first getting to know campus and so be uh, seeing it so beautiful, but also like knowing that you belong since day one, since the day you came into orientation, you're like, hey, this is like where I'm supposed to be. So that's <laughs> that's very cool. Yeah, my when I arrive here, it's like it's green and it's very beautiful, and the campus is so big and very hilly. And as before that, I thought that Kansas is flat, and it's so hilly, so it's surprising. You get your exercise when walking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they have they have a name for what happens to your legs when you go to school here. Yeah, 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 yeah. KU calves. Yeah. 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 And so, um, getting settled settled into your lives as students, um, what what resources did you use? How did that process work for you? Well, so far, uh, the resources that I use is like writing center because I have a lot of writing projects like for English and I'm really bad at writing and writing center is really helping me and I also have like academic advisor and the AAP advisor because I'm in the AAP program and they're really they all really helpful and I also um, there's someone in AAP that is for career accelerator and she really helpful for me like I joined a lot of things because she told me there's a lot of things left here, a lot of things there, and I, I managed to join all of them, and it's like a great experience for me. Yeah, I can totally agree with the writing center um, advice. Like, even, I used to be really bad at writing my freshman year, and so I would constantly go there, but even though I'm better now, I still go back to like, get myself proofreaded, and they tell me how I can make my paper the best that it can be. So I think the writing center is great. Besides, I'm in the School of Engineering, so besides just talking to my advisor, I feel like I can just reach out to any of the other professors or advisors and they can open up opportunities for me, like research or like a teaching position and stuff like that. I think, yeah. 
Um, yes, like talking to our advisors too, I think that's uh, uh, super good. Just uh, getting your feet wet in other places too, just like going to this fair and then seeing what opportunities are on campus or just going to a club you like maybe. Um, it's, uh, and then you meet people throughout all these activities that you're doing, which can help you like a lot in the future just by getting your feet wet at first. So I think just doing that is uh, very helpful. And so um, you you kind of, you talked about academic advising and you talked about um, connecting with people you know who are here you know, as faculty or um, as university support staff. Um, to talk a little bit more about like the academic experience that you've had, um, you know whether it's you know the ways those people have supported you with it or just what your impressions of uh, classes and what you're learning. Yeah. Um, so the academic experience is great. Um, like, there is definitely like that element of work. Like, you don't expect to go to any college or university, like anywhere, and expect not to like put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um, but I feel like the support system is so strong, and like professors are there to help you all the time whenever you need it. Um, I remember taking this class, and I feel like the best description of this class is like running. 200 miles but you have like the most amazing person just beside you cheering you on the class was a struggle and it was a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of effort but my professor was absolutely amazing and he would like put in so much time and so much effort to make sure that every single student like understood the material and was following along with the class and no student was left behind and that was his policy and that was absolutely an amazing experience for me um one other really cool component that I love about classes at KU is that a lot of them are very hands-on. You get the opportunity to like use your major with like real life projects and real life things and you're not just like sitting in a classroom for three hours and we just learning like conceptual things. So yeah. Good. Cool. I feel like KU also has some like very good classes to get you settled into college like University mm -hmm. of 492 or one of those classes which just like let you know what college life is like and how to get adapt to it. They let you know what resources they have on campus too, so that you're fully aware of what you can use and what's available. And I think that's great for students. I think most classes in KU uh, uh, don't just have a professor at the front of the classroom mm -hmm. like talking information at you, but there are a lot of uh, graduate teaching assistants and undergraduate teaching assistants who have taken that class previously, so they know exactly what the like where we where we as beginners start so they are really approachable and like a good person to ask for help yeah yeah and some classes like have their lab sections so like if you're afraid of like asking a question in this big lecture hall mm -hmm. there are more as uh, these are more specified uh, specialized uh, little classes for you to feel more comfortable and that way you have a better understanding of the topics even outside of classes, I think you can just uh, go up and talk to some upperclassmen who have been through exactly the same thing that you have. So they always have good advice to give from like first-hand experience. I think it's great to connect with others who are who are studying the same things as you are to get to learn from what they have learned. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about outside of uh, classes a little bit more. What is there to do uh, besides going to class and studying and, and all of that um, around here? What do you do outside of classes? <laughs> um, so KU has over 600 different clubs and organizations. Uh, so it's really, really easy to get involved with at least one club or organization. And getting involved is so fun and so amazing. You get to meet a lot of people who are interested in the same kinds of things that you are. Um, you get to make a lot of friends and a lot of connections through that. So yeah, clubs and organizations are absolutely amazing. And I've been involved in a couple of, a couple of clubs and organizations, and they've been absolutely amazing. Yes. Uh, and like, it's, it can be not only something that's specify to your major but like yeah. if you want a sport or if you want something like that's I don't know a cooking club or something there's, there's just so many like opportunities on campus to learn different things outside of class. There's even an anime club, yeah. a knitting club, and just about anything you like there's probably a club for it and if there isn't you can start one. Yeah. Like just invent the new one. <laughs> and so what, what clubs and organizations have you all been a part of? Oof. 
<laughs> uh, so right now I'm involved with like an engineering organization. Um, actually, not one, three engineering organizations. Um, so I'm in an organization called Space Hawks, and we design and plan a space mission uh, like through a semester. So it's like a continuous project. Uh, and yeah, we're working on that right now. Um, I'm also involved with two engineering honor societies, one in engineering as a whole and then one specific to my major. Um, then outside of the engineering school, I am involved with an organization called Find Me Alpha. So it's a musical organization and yeah, we host like musical events and we plan like huge concerts uh, during the school year. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm involved with the KU Women in Computing. It's just a small group of women in computing majors. Besides that, I like to go to other clubs like math club, or even uh, there's one called KU Mindfulness and Meditation. So just to de-stress from sure, yeah. <laughs> the grind of school. Yeah. Um, like, I'm kind of similar with you, involved in uh, like a couple of engineering associations, like uh, Society for Hispanic Professional Engineers, so which is like empowering uh, Hispanic and Latinos engineers to uh, get out there and really get our name shown and know the opportunities we have. Uh, that's pretty cool. Also with like uh, AICHT, which is like American Institute for Chemical Engineers. Um, that's just very cool and specific to your major, but also you know what you can do and what other people in your field do. And that's pretty cool. And I'm also part of like uh, Men's Volleyball Club, uh, which honestly, I love it so much. So much fun. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> is that through the uh, the rec center? Is that an intramural thing? Or? No, it's not intramural, but it's like sports club. So like, okay. we're still, uh, uh, so like we go to tournaments out of state and right. we still coach like nationals and stuff. So it's more of a like team builder. Uh, that's not not just like playing. Like it's more competitive than that. Right. Like intramural, but still, like just as fun. It's a club sport, uh -huh. so yeah. So you, you register and you, you pay a fee and yeah. you, you get to you get to play other schools in volleyball, yes. right? Yeah, cool. Okay. How about you, Vivian? Um, well, I'm joining some engineering clubs like um, the AICHE for the chemical engineers. I also join like the Society of Women Engineers, Engineers Without Borders. Um, I'm the refreshment representative for the ISP. International Society for Pharmaceutical Engineers, hmm. if I'm not wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's that. And I also joined GSA, Japanese Student Association, even though I'm not from Japan, from Japan, because I like to learn Japanese language. So I joined them and they opened like a study table for Japanese so I can learn another language while just joining the club and having fun. And learning new language. Cool. Um, so are you, are you, is that the only way you're going about learning Japanese? Or are you like enrolled in any formal classes or anything? Or you just thought I'll hang out with some people from Japan and learn a new language? No, I didn't enroll to any class. Just, just hang out. Just hanging out and learning <laughs> Japanese. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, and so, um, just in, in general, uh, I mean, what um, what was the thing that surprised you most about the United States? I would definitely say with people, like Lawrence, Kansas is just such a welcoming place. When I came here, people were so nice. And uh, I think that's just kind of different from back home, but it was good to feel like, it, they make you feel like you're welcome and like, this is a good place for international students. Yeah. People also like, like to help others and it's so different from back home and the winter like the temperature <laughs> is so different like in my home country the temperature is not that unstable like here is they're so fluctuating <laughs> because this is my first year here and my first winter my first summer so <laughs> someone told me that there are five seasons in one week in Kansas. Yes. Like, yes. Rain one day that's sunny that's summer. Yes. And I believe them now that I've been here for a year. Honestly it's like snowing on one day and this afternoon it's gonna be sunny like fifty degrees outside. Yeah. And if you ever get a chance to see all four seasons in a day. And you'll know you're a Kansas. <laughs> I've seen it snow in the morning and then it was 
put on shorts in the afternoon. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, we do we do have four distinct seasons in uh, in Kansas. Um, winter, winter. It seems like it's started now. Um, it's uh, you know from, from from November, December until you know maybe mid uh, mid March. It'll be pretty cold, and then spring kind of starts slowly in March, and then. Late May into sometimes September, we'll have summer, and then fall happens like late September, mid October, whenever it really feels like it. <laughs> and then you wake up one day and it's <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, cool. Fall is so beautiful. I think fall is yeah, beautiful. Fall is beautiful. <laughs> like I take a lot of pictures and send back it to send it back to my mother and say. Oh, it's like like a picture, like a like, picture, not a real picture, just like someone painting it. <laughs> oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about um, let's talk a little bit more about um, differences between here and home. Um, what how is how is KU different than a university that you might experience um, in, in the country that you came from? Um, I feel like the opportunities for hands-on learning are a lot more here. Um, so like KU is part of the AAU and that just like opens up a huge opportunity of or just like a huge variety of opportunities for students. Um, so yeah, I don't think I would have gotten like those same opportunities to like experience my major and like do like actual like real life learning things like if I was just going if I was going to university at home I probably like sit in a class and do a lab like once a month or something or once in the semester and like not really like I mean I've learned the theoretical concepts but not really have that experience to like use it hands on so I feel like that's a good opportunity that I've gotten at KU that I probably would have gotten home. Yeah I, I definitely agree like the there's a big difference between like uh, here in KU and back home since like uh, here we're highly encouraged to do stuff out of like out of our comfort zone out of like the class but like look towards uh, building your career from day one so like looking for internships looking for research looking for opportunities that might uh, benefit you in the future while back home it might be just concentrated in the theoreticals in the class. I think uh, KU gives so many opportunities for you to grow as a person and not just as a student. Like, all, of course, the academic support and the academic resources are amazing. But beyond that, we're encouraged to develop our leadership skills, our communication skills, our interpersonal skills. And just, I think, it, KU is preparing us for life. Yeah. The same, like, a lot of hands on learning. Well, in my home, it's like only lecture, mm -hmm. professor teach in front and students just hearing them and then not really much hands-on learning like here. And so um, why, why should someone choose KU and not someplace else? And I mean, um, I mean, to answer that, maybe think about you know, your, own, uh, your own college search experience. I mean, we're probably not the only university you applied to, right? Um, what was it ultimately that made you choose KU and why should somebody else do that? Yeah, uh, so in my college search process, like I looked through a lot of universities and a lot of them had like really good um, like engineering programs and really good majors in the field that I wanted to study. But then I felt like KU's program just did a lot more and had a lot more recognition. So my major is uh, the aerospace department at KU is the most Oh, AIAA awarded aerospace department in the United States, so it is huge. Uh, but then just also the sense of community outside of classes, like outside of me taking notes or working on projects, like who am I, like what would I get? And I feel like those opportunities are so much bigger and so much better at KU, like experiencing like leadership opportunities, experiencing people from different cultures and different backgrounds and just like um, expanding myself as a person as Archana mentioned earlier, like just not as a student, like my breadth of experiences, the opportunities that I've gotten to go out of KU, like through KU, but outside of KU and like make an impact is, is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so like getting out of your comfort zone, uh, just like, <clears throat> That sense of coming abroad to a completely different place and uh, having just as many struggles as 
uh, domestic student has with college itself, uh, just getting out there and really <clears throat> experiencing experience this challenge. Like I feel like as an engineer, trying to make the best out of the situation and grab the good, good part of it and make something that's even better is something that really drove me here to KU. I think as I was researching more about the University of Kansas, as I was looking to the website, I just realized that there are so many resources available. Even as I was sitting back home on my computer, I was like, there are so many things that can help me become this version of myself that I want to be at the end of my four-year degree. And all of these resources, such as the academic and like the community, community, um, the idea of community outside and inside of class, I think that just really attracted me. Um, I, I had also been corresponded by uh, like uh, 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 many representatives from the International Student Association, uh, International uh, ISS, and people were contacted me and told me that if they I have any questions, I can go and talk to them. And I think there was like the support was there from day one as I applied. So I think that really attracted me. Yeah, yeah. I'm choosing KU because the engineering department they say they say that in KU is really advanced in the engineering and so I choose here and when I enrolled here and the support system is really awesome like I got email like almost every day from the ISS or maybe from another student support system like that and it's awesome um. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about um, about that. Um, what what are your what are your plans for uh, after graduation, and how would you say that um, the KU is prepared, <laughs> yeah. prepared for that? Maybe a little earlier for some of you to start <laughs> like, to start talking about that than others. But um, but what what's uh, what's your what's your long term goal here, and how is how is KU preparing for that? <laughs> no, no, I was just I was just talking to Abe about this before the <laughs> webinar that uh, coming to KU has made me realize how much I love being in school and how I how much I love learning new things. And so, as a computer science major, I uh, hope to go on to graduate school and try to like explore into the different fields of computer science and see which one I can potentially specialize in. Yeah, so I think KU has given me a lot of enthusiasm for learning new things, and yeah. I think that's the best thing I've had. In terms of I think I'm like the complete officer. <laughs> Thank you, you have taught me that I want to get out there. <laughs> uh, I'm ready. <laughs> but um, and so, what are you going to do out there? Yeah, yeah. I feel like something I would really like to do is working with like renewable energies or like um, environment. Like I'm a chemical engineer with an environmental emphasis, so like. Honestly, really focus on that, and uh, I feel KU has been preparing me very good for that. I'm currently involved with, with like uh, wastewater treatment research, so um, I thought like at the beginning I wasn't really into that. I was just like, yeah, I'll just get into a lab, you know, put it on your resume. But uh, honestly, I've learned so much about it that I like and that I want to do with, and like something that could benefit not only me but like my surroundings and my country, you know? Yeah, uh, for me, I'm also thinking a little bit about grad school, but my end term, end like uh, long-term goal is to work with propulsion systems of some sort, uh, whether it's aircraft or spacecraft propulsions. Uh, but yeah, like obviously after grad school, if I decide to go to grad school, I'd end up getting the job. But yeah, I feel like with, with my time at KU, I've been able to grow myself a lot more, especially with my career. Like the number of times that I've gone to talk to advisors or gone to talk to the career center about like making the best resume or like doing mock interviews or uh, writing a cover letter, or what to do, what ex employers are expecting and how to like be most effective in your work path has just been amazing. And then getting the opportunities to actually work um, on campus has just given me that opportunity to be like, hey, this is actually what the real like work environment is like. And yeah, that's, that's like a great starting point for future career. Well, um, how many how many of you have had a campus job? I know Adrian has. Um, well, yeah, yeah. And so what uh, what has that been like? Where have you worked and um, how has that helped you? Yeah, uh, so 
one of like my biggest ones has been that I have been a student ambassador for the university since uh, the second semester of my freshman year. So going on over a year and a half now, <laughs> it's weird. Uh, but yeah, that has just given me the opportunity to like interact with so many like people. Like I give campus tours to different families from different states, sometimes from different countries, uh, talking to people about their experiences, talking to people about different majors and what they want to do. And like working through that process with a lot of people has been so beneficial and so helpful. And it has just given me like a good breadth of knowledge and has really boosted my like human and interpersonal um, relationship skills. And yeah, that's been really awesome. Um, I think I, I, my first, uh, I started off as working at the library because I love reading and I've always wanted to like support uh, the working, the inner workings of the library. So that was one of the jobs I had. Currently I'm employed at the School of Engineering as a undergraduate teaching assistant for one of the freshman level classes. And it's great to just interact with people who are just getting into the major and talking to them about concepts that they might be foreign to, but getting them introduced to it and getting them excited about it. I think it's, it's a lot of, it's really rewarding to see, to see someone learn. Uh, over the summer, I worked for orientation, for international student orientation, and that was the most fun I've ever had, I think. It was, it was just great. And I think it's like really cool to notice that Abraham works as a student ambassador, Adrian works at the International Student Services, I worked at, for orientation. So, Somehow, all of us are drawn to bringing KU up because we love it so much. So we're like, hey, look at how awesome this place is. We, like, yeah. we, just, we just cannot stop from like, doing that. <laughs> so we, That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. <laughs> um, and, it's, and, and so you're an undergraduate, mm -hmm. and you're teaching a freshman level class. Yes. OK, let's, let's talk a little bit more about that kind of stuff, because it has always amazed me just like the level of, um, of activity, the level of responsibility, um, the level of accomplishment that KU kind of pushes undergraduates towards. I mean, teaching yeah. as an undergraduate is a big deal. Um, and a lot of you, are, you have participated in research activity and things like that. So um, you're playing a moon mission, you mentioned earlier, or something to that effect. Okay. Um, so um, what, what, uh, what teaching, research, leadership activities have you been involved in while you've been here? <laughs> okay, I think um, there, so research and teaching fellowships are usually seen as something that only graduate students do, and some people uh, only, and as if they're only available to people who have years of experience. But uh, coming to KU, uh, I've realized that if you have acquired a skill, you are qualified to pass it on to someone else. And that, I think, is what like motivates everyone who's an undergraduate uh, teaching fellow or just anyone who's like helping someone else out. I took that class like two semesters ago, so I, I really enjoyed it. So I said, hey, I want to go back and help all these other people who are going to be in the same situation that I was semesters ago. And I feel like I have mastered all the concepts in that class as I'm teaching it. As, as I impart that in, in knowledge to someone else, I'm like, it's, it's reinforcing in my head and I'm getting better and better at it. So it's a it's it's a win win. Like they're benefiting out of benefiting out of it, and I'm benefiting out of it. So it's pretty great. They say you retain something like upwards of eighty percent of something that you teach to someone exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's the best way to learn. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really cool. Yep. All right. I also I didn't know that you could get in get involved in research before I came to you as an undergraduate. I am looking to be at a research position next semester. I was I just talked to my advisor and. He told me that I could be doing research with him, so I think that's also really cool that that's happening here. Uh, so some of those experiences are absolutely amazing, and I feel like the um, undergraduate teaching fellow like part of um, the that opportunity in general is really helpful to the person who's doing it and also to the students um, because finding someone who has been in the same boat as you, like who just took the class like mm -hmm. within the last one or two years. And then like helping you through that process is really awesome. Um, so yeah, it's like a really beneficial opportunity. Um, but yeah, some of the other things I do, uh, I mean, 
I I'm not solely planning the space mission. <laughs> so yeah, I'm working with the team. Uh, there's like 20 or 30 of us right now on that team, and we're just like working through what we need uh, to plan that space mission and like going through the structures and all the technology that we need to 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 finish that project. So yeah, it's a NASA initiated contest, like NASA Rascal. So a lot of universities are actually um, participating in this. So it is is an awesome opportunity, and yeah, I'm super excited to to be a part of that team and working through that process. Yeah, and like, it's not like I've gotten like any other like big training on this, it's just literally what I've learned in my classes and just applying that knowledge to actual like real life things. Yeah. Any, any other uh, like undergraduate research or um, leadership activities that you've been involved in? Or? Yeah, do you want to talk about Oh yeah. Uh, so actually, you also live in the scholarship halls too. Uh, so three of us here uh, lived in the scholarship halls, and those are like a slightly different community from the regular like residence halls. So in the scholarship halls, it's more like living in a house. There's a fewer. There's a lot less people living in the scholarship halls than in the big residence hall. Um, so you kind of get to know a lot of the people you live with, um, and yeah, the sense of community is great. But even within that like residential community, um, there is there are leadership opportunities available. Um, so my sophomore year, I was the environmental chair and diversity and inclusion chair for my building. Um, Arjuna was actually my supervisor because <laughs> uh, there is a governing body uh, for the scholarship halls, like a governing resource, I guess, um, and that's ESHC, so that's the All Scholarship Hall Council, and she was on that council um, when I was doing that in my sophomore year, and that was like an awesome opportunity. So again, I got to interact with a lot of like the people who I lived with and just like work through a lot of things and um, kind of being an educator while I was also learning about those things myself. So yeah, that was a really, really awesome opportunity that I had. I think, yeah, the scholarship halls, and even I feel like all uh, on campus residential life has a lot of leadership positions that you can relate to the things that you're passionate about. So, the uh, positions that we have at the uh, in the community of the scholarship halls is things like community service, uh, environmental, as Abraham mentioned, and like. Um, like social, so uh, you can be a social chair and put on all these like fun events for the community, and yeah, it's just great that you can take something that you're passionate about and put it into something, and it might be separate from your major, but you can still pursue it just as something that's important. Yeah. Yeah, I think living in the scholarship hall, especially your freshman year, is like such a great experience because like other than uh, you come to this, it's it's just a very good community builder. So like it's easy to meet people and just get out there and talk to someone, which uh, at first you may be like so terrified to do. So like being in a place that's already, you know, um, together, like they're already, they already get along. Mm -hmm. It's easier to get into a group and then you can apply that into different scenarios. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions from the group well, from, from the attendees that we might. Why would one choose KU as his or her university? Uh, yeah, I think you touched on that a yeah. little bit, but yeah, uh, for me again, it was the sense of community and the tradition and how like together everyone at KU is. There's just like a big sense of camaraderie like within the university. Uh, one of my favorite things that we do is the rock chalk chant. Um, so when you say rock chalk to someone, they say Jayhawk back to you. <laughs> and I've been in like multiple places around the United States and I'll see someone like wearing um, something KU branded, like a KU hat or a KU shirt, and I say rock chalk to them and they say Jayhawk. Uh, <laughs> my favorite thing is hearing like stories of people who have gone on study abroad programs and have seen like people in different countries wearing things that are KU branded. Uh, my friend and I were talking like two nights ago actually about how her dad met his best friend. Uh, so he went on a trip to Syria and right at the airport, this man um, standing at um, the board, like at the at departure hall um, was wearing a KU shirt and that man was waiting for his brother, um, but he went to KU and her dad also went to KU and her dad walked out and said rock chalk to this man just like standing at a departure hall in Syria and then they became best friends. So yeah, <laughs> that, that sense of 
camaraderie and just like yeah that that good like culture and community is, is absolutely amazing yes definitely like uh KU just has so much tradition mm -hmm. and uh, that's one of the things I'm so glad I I like got introduced to at orientation just like knowing the class or like the rock talk channel the alma mater or like all of this tradition KU has really brings you with the university and makes you like love university even more uh and i think that's honestly pretty cool like with my club uh, with my volleyball team uh, every time before a game we like get together we huddle and then we we go like rock talk. we do the rock check and ourselves and it's like it's amazing to just represent ku and like little things but they mean so much for you i feel like every, everyone i've interacted with or like i've gone to for advice is so invested in the success, like in your success, you're like, hey, I'm here to like help you out, and you're gonna do great. It be it like professors in office hours, um, like graduate teaching assistants in help rooms, or just like the person who lives like lives next door to me. If I am having a bad day, I just go and I talk to them, and I'm feeling so much more better just if I can respond to them. So I think there's a sense of community everywhere, everywhere I go at KU. So I think that's really valuable. Even for the international students, like KU is so diverse, like mm -hmm. a lot of international students in here. So even if you're an international student that is like from your own country alone, you're not feeling alone because there's also international students that is just they from their country, that's they alone from their country and you can make friends with them. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people in the same situation. Yeah. 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 We have uh, we have something like upwards of 2,100 international students here, over 100 countries represented. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make friends from all over the place, and uh, and that common experience really kind of I imagine. I mean, I've had experiences like that before, where you know everybody's kind of in the same ship, and we all bond. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. And so, um, oh, are there other questions from the? attendees or i think we have answered how is ku different from other universities yeah mm -hmm. um, let's see what is this webinar about which we <laughs> are how ku is a good fit um so uh questions from uh from the last time we we did something like this uh we're kind of focused on um yeah on on that common experience and adjusting to it and meeting new people um how have you dealt with uh how have you dealt with homesickness how have you uh how have you overcome challenges with adjusting to life at university which is a huge you know huge adjustment huge change in life and then you're going and you're going and you're doing that in another country in a totally different culture um, how have you uh, how have you approached those sorts of challenges? Um, so, like as we were saying before, since you literally have a support system from day one, maybe like your orientation group, which like at least in my experience, I took like a lot of my freshman classes with people in my orientation group. So like we're even though orientation like ended we're still in the class together and we're still like getting along and we're still getting through it together. Mm -hmm. So like if we had like a class problem, we knew we could rely on each other or like do homework together or just like uh, rant, about, rant about how hard college is, I don't know. But like uh, <laughs> we were there for each other and uh, I think just having uh, uh, like someone there for you just to, like to hear you out and like understand your struggle, it's, uh, it helps you a lot getting through it. Yeah, the orientation is really meaningful like because for international students we have like a long or long orientation it's like almost two weeks <laughs> so it's really helpful and it's really like you can explore campus on that two weeks while you have someone beside you that know the campus and you also make friends with your own orientation group like i'm i become a best friend with my friend that is from my orientation group and i'm so lucky that in my orientation group, like almost like 80% of them live in the same residence hall as me. So we became like a small group in the residence hall, even though we live like in fourth floor and third floor and ninth floor, but we still managed to like keep up with each other so we can tell stories like 
ranting about everything college or academics or stuff like that. Yeah, I think uh, besides just getting introduced to norms and campus during orientation, like we are there are a lot of tablings with all of the resources that are on campus. So you get to you're you're introduced to like many things like the international peer support uh, and like things like that. I think just a couple of days ago, I I saw an event which was taking students from Lawrence to Kansas City, which is the bigger city where people usually go to shop for winter clothes, because a lot of people come here without a jacket. And yeah. so it's like, if there's someone who's willing to take that extra step and, and get you uh, comfortable in this like new place and um, unfamiliar situations, such as the weather and things like that, then I think it's, it's worth sticking through the homesickness and like making everything work. I always talk to my mom, so that's how I, I, <laughs> and that's how my talk to my mom helps with my homesickness, I think. Yeah, I was just gonna say like, try to stay connected to home as much yeah, as possible. Yeah, definitely. Video chat if you need to, mm -hmm. if you need to schedule the times because a yeah. lot of times like college can get crazy and mm -hmm. you, yeah. you kind of forget that you haven't talked to your mom or dad in like three weeks, but just like try, try to stay connected to home, try to keep in touch with your friends and family, yeah, and that really just makes everything a lot better. Well, so if you had to, uh, if you had to explain KU in, I don't know, 10 seconds or less, say you're you're going home for a break or something like that and you're sitting next to somebody on the airplane and you get to chatting you know what have you been doing in the United States how do you uh how do you describe this place to that person <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's way too fast <laughs> okay let's say you get a minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> Every day I talk about KU for about an hour and yes. I still feel like an hour isn't enough to describe just how much I love this place. But yeah, KU has given me so many things that I couldn't imagine that I would have gotten out of a college experience. Even coming here, I was just like, oh, wow, I'm going to college, woohoo. But now it's like, this is my home. This is a place that I can come to 20 years from now and still feel the same way every single day that I see this campus and that I like think about the opportunities and the experiences and the people and the interactions that I've made. And yeah, it is an unmatched experience in my opinion. I can totally agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought like it was really a place where you find yourself, not only academically, but personally. It's a place where you realize a person and you also find what your passion really is. More or less the same. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people, even when I first came here, I had a lot of fears of like, oh, it's a whole other country. I don't know if I'm going to be able to adjust. But I think I felt the most comfortable I've had in a long time, which is helping me grow as a person. And like, even when I'm stressed with like a class or something, I go by quarterly and I sit below the trees and I open my book and I read. I'm like, hey, it's going to be all right. I'm going to do fine. And I go into my exam and I do well. It's, yeah. I think with, with besides like just like the support system you have, even the physical atmosphere is like we have so many great study spaces in the library in each of our departments. Yeah, I think like, a lot of libraries. I love it. Yes, and in the libraries there's a like quiet study place mm -hmm. where it's really quiet, no no noise, no sound, and yeah. you can like concentrate to what you're studying there. Yeah, it's like the whole campus is conspiring to for your success. They're like, you will, you will see like, <laughs> yeah. here. That's a good conspiracy to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fortunate. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah, if there's nothing else from the attendees, um, we might go ahead and, and wind it up. But uh, thank all four of you for, for being here with us today. And um, thank the attendees for, for dialing in. Um, if you have any questions about becoming a student at, uh, at the University of Kansas, um, visit, uh, visit world.ku.edu and that will take you to the International Admissions website um, where all the information you need to get started will be. 
And uh, if you have questions um, that you want to ask a university representative or even maybe connect with a current student, um, email us at, at world at ku .edu and, um, and we'll put you in touch with somebody. Otherwise, uh, online, we are on the major social media sites. You can find us there and learn more. Um, but yeah, thank you all for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.